Well, let's uh, talk now to Simon Yule. He's head of policy and advocacy at Positive Money, which campaigns for what they describe as a fairer and more sustainable banking system. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, how much progress do you think has been made? I mean, I, I think this um, announcement from the Chancellor today, you know, marks some progress. Um, the transition plans being made mandatory is a, a very positive step, especially the idea of it being backed by a science-based transition plan task force. But, you know, these uh, plans and task force are only as strong as the regulation behind them. I think the overarching message from both, you know, the, the Chancellor's speech today and the announcement we've had from Mark Carney, from GFAN, from others, is an overall message of let's leave it to the market uh, and the private sector to fix the problem. We're still relying on these market-based solutions such as um, information gathering, disclosure, which are based on like the kind of efficient market hypothesis and the assumptions which led to the last financial crisis that if you know just if we increase the amount of information you know markets will be able to efficiently and rationally um, realign but you know we, we've seen over the past decade or decades that um, financial firms have known about climate risk and have done very little. They're still aligned with, um, the markets are still aligned with global heating far above what the Paris Agreement um, dictates states are, are committed to. Um, so we, we need a lot more action from governments to be leading the way in driving this transition. We can't just leave it to the private sector and the market to fix. We can't privatise the green transition. It's far too important for that. Um, with more transparency and accountability though with companies having to publish their plans at a time when obviously you know the apps the trajectory is clear in terms of where we're headed what the goals are does is, is that going to mean that it will just be it will be self-fulfilling because of that um, not necessarily I, I think you know a we have to think about how robust the science-based targets actually are to make sure they are led by um, science rather than just the vested interests of industry. Um, there's been lots of issues with um, disclosure and, and, and uh, you know, taxonomies in, in, in other places, such as the EU, around this. Um, what we need, essentially, is the government um, and the central banks to be using their muscle to shift financial flows um, towards where they're needed, rather than, essentially, um, relying on um, private finance to do the right thing. And, so how, you know, sorry we, to interrupt you. So how would that work then? So, you know, throughout the 20th century, um, governments and central banks have taken, you know, took large um, measures to essentially guide credit to where it was needed most productively. Um, and we essentially need to be looking at those tools again and, and having governments and central banks um, using, you know, their strategic oversight of the economy and, and uh, finding out where we need investment and then actually... Um, you know, giving quotas and, and um, towards um, financial firms, towards investing in strategic priorities. But what we also need more than anything is public investment. And, you know, Rishi Sunak talked about public investment and the importance of it today, but he's not putting his money where his mouth is. In, in, the, in the budget, um, we, we got a figure of 30 billion, um, which seems to be over three years for public investment in the green transition, whereas experts have said we need 30 billion a year to ensure a green transition. So I think public finance needs to be doing most of the heavy lifting if we're going to get a fair transition. Um, private finance will only invest in what's profitable and will be um, you know, subsidising um, those costs and paying for those costs. Um, renewables are not that profitable investments. Um, so as a state, is going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And when you look at what has been happening in terms of investment in fossil fuel companies, is actually gone up um, exactly. from the, the the biggest banks in the world since the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, there's necessarily, isn't there, a transition where, I mean, when you talk about profitability for banks' investments, it, it, it can't be, a you know, wh wh whatever the desire is, there has to be a, a process by which, it, and it will take time. W what do you think in t would be a sort of realistic time frame? I mean, definitely, you're right. Um, like fossil fuels are far more profitable than renewable energy at the moment. But that's why banks like to fund it so much. Uh, you know, these are better investments um, for them and their balance sheets at the end of the day. Um, you know, this is why we need to be, as I said, having the state leading the way. And, you know, as you, as you say, um, there, there needs to really be stuff in the GFAN's announcement we've had today 
on um, no more investment in fossil fuels. And, and we need we need governments to be restricting um, investment in fossil fuels. So the IEA has been, the International Energy Agency, has been quite clear on this, on the pathway we need. We need no new investment in fossil fuel expansion and, and new projects um, beyond this year, if we're going to reach their pathway for net zero by 2050, as well as a tripling of um, green investment. So I think that's the pathway we need to be looking at. The governments and central banks need to be regulating um, and restricting um, fossil fuel investments um, beyond this year. Thank you very much for joining us. That's Simon Yule of Positive Money. Well, let's talk about another